Hey, if you're watching, if you're watching, you better just join us and help to um, share the broadcast so people can be able to come on. It's going to be an exciting time this evening. Look, I'm fired up. We are ready. We aim and will fire tonight. You know, trusting God that the Spirit of God will give us guidance. So please share, share in all the platforms, you know, all your friends. He said he can't see me. I'm here. <laughs> I don't think the powers really want that. Just to give you guys a heads up, my guest is ready on the back backstage in the green room. <laughs> He's ready to come on. I'm excited. I'm fired up. You know, you want to learn. So share, 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 share. Let the world go out. Share. This is a wonderful opportunity. You know, people pay. To have such opportunities that it's it's coming to us, we're having it free. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, y'all. Share this broadcast. Let people come on live. We are almost ready to get started. My guest is here. Yes, Kerry, we are grateful and excited. We are grateful and excited. This is going to be awesome tonight. We are, we are grateful and excited. It is going to be a wonderful um, um, time tonight. Before we even um, go ahead, I believe strongly in prayer. We thank God. We'll just take a couple of minutes to just pray. Uh, my 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 guest Rod is um is on live now, but he's just waiting for me to bring him on. So we bless God for his grace and his mercies, for his kindness, for affording us this opportunity to converge online. Father, we thank you, God. We pray that the airwaves are open. We pray, God, that you get the minds of the people ready tonight, oh God, even as we prepare to have an awesome time in your presence. We ask, oh God, that your power, Lord, will saturate this broadcast. We declare this day that the airwaves are open. We declare this day, God, that your power will manifest like never before. Uh, we bless you, God, because you have given us the grace, Lord, um, to prosper. You have given us the ability, oh God, to create wealth. Father, Lord, we bless you, O oh God. It is you, O oh God, that give us the power to make wealth. So we thank you. We thank you for us many that are on this broadcast. We thank you because their minds are ready. We thank you because their spirits are ready. We thank you, O oh God, because they are ready, O oh God, to receive tonight, O oh God, even as my guest, Gerard, Lord, um, speak to us from what you've placed on his heart in a season like this. We are not limited. We bless your name, God. We bless your name. Nabrode Shakabaya. We are excited. We are excited. Oh, my God. I am happy. My God. My God. My God. My God. I am happy. We are happy, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, we bless your name Father God. Abba, we bless you. Abba, we bless you. Abba, we bless you. Abba, we bless you. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I want to really um, thank you for joining this broadcast tonight i really want to thank you for joining i'm just giving a couple of minutes for um people to be aware that we are live on i don't want anybody to miss out because i don't think we'll have all the time to repeat ourselves over and over hence i've not brought my guest up yet because once he comes on i'm signing out i will just talk ask him a couple of questions but i'm just going to throw it to him and allow him to um to do what god has placed on his heart but i'm giving time if you know your friends and family put them on tell them to join anyone who's been asking you 
for resources, for money, this is the best time to give them the link to join. I'll tell you the truth. Anybody who has been asking you for money, this is the link to send them in this season. Anybody that has been asking you for how to get a job, send them this link today. One of the biggest blessings you will do for people today, one of the biggest blessings you will do for people today is to share this link with them. Now, this is one link that I authorize you to bombard people's inboxes. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not going to be apologetic about this one. On this broadcast, I, I give you permission. I give you permission to bombard people's inboxes with this. I give you liberty, your friends, your family, your children, your spouse, you know, your ex, you know, will come to trouble you for money, you know, and all the people, your your mother, father, you know, wherever they are, this is this is this is this is better than money, y'all. I'm telling you the truth. This is better. So what we are about to do tonight, it is what more than a thousand bucks. I'm not playing. He said, because the, the guest we have today, if he was going to speak anywhere else about what we want to share today, people are paying to fill a room to enjoy of this benefit. Now, why I say this is more than a thousand bucks is because in this pandemic, in this coronavirus situation, this chaos that we have, you know, around, if you give somebody 500 pounds in the next one month, it amount to nothing. If they don't have the ability to multiply it, they don't have the necessary skills to multiply it it'll be nothing they will come back again but i guarantee you i'm saying this i guarantee you if you would send somebody this link and then put a disclaimer for them to listen to it follow the instructions learn from what will be given today you would not need to give them 500 pounds they will be coming back in about a month two three six months and a year they will be coming back to give you a seed offering to thank you for giving them this link, to thank you for allowing them to see this, to thank you for bringing them in. You know, when people say, I want to bring you in on our deal, I want to bring you in on a transaction, I want to bring you in on, on something that we're working on, you know, on the business proposal that, that we, we've got an IPO, you know, we're working on. I want to bring you in on it. Uh, there is a tender that we, we are working on. I want to bring you in on it. Now, this is the kind of this is the kind of conversation we're talking about. This is the kind of conversation where you bring people in on this because something is about to happen. Something is about to change in your life. There are there are a lot of you watching this broadcast now. You will come back in a month's time, in two months' time, and say, Dabo, thank you. Thank you for hosting this. And please, if you don't mind us asking, can you put up another session? You will come back because I know the value of what you're about to receive and i'm not just saying this because i just want to excite you i have enjoyed of the value in this relationship i'll tell you the truth i have enjoyed it a small space of time that i've known the gentleman that we're bringing to speak to us i have personally enjoyed the value the wisdom that come out of this man the the grace that him and his wife has you know what they have inside of them to share the, the kind of wealth of knowledge that is on the shoulders of this young body that you see athletic young body like would always see in my house this handsome handsome looking god fearing man the kind of wisdom and grace that is on him i don't i don't i don't underestimate things like this and i think there's a burden on my heart to pray for jared even now even before it comes up father i pray for this man I thank you for the grace that you've given him, oh God, for the wisdom that you've put in him, for the grace of humility that you've put in this man. Lord, we honor you for that, oh God. We thank you. We bless you for that. We do not take it for granted in any way. We do not take it for granted. But rather, God, we, we salute your grace and your mercy, oh God. We pray, God, that today, when he comes up, you'll give him clarity of speech. You'll give him boldness. Lord, you will allow him to be articulate, oh God, to speak your mind in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray this day that there would not be any form of obstruction. There would not be any form of hindrance. There's nothing, Lord, that will hinder his flow of oh God, that everything will work the way you have designed for, for it to work. In the name of Jesus. All right. I will bring in, I will bring in um, my friend and brother. I introduce him. So he's live with us. I'll say a couple of things. And then um, once I, I introduce him, say a couple of things, we can begin to run. We would not waste time and then we can begin to run. So thank you so much, all our friends and family from all over the world. 
Thank you for um, um, joining us this evening. We be blessed our lives. We thank you and praying today that even as you join us, your life, your life will not remain, your life will not remain the same again. So I'll play the promo and then um, he will come on, but he would not begin to speak. Right? Or rather, I'll bring him on. He will not begin to speak. Then when I play the promo, then um, the mic will pass to him. So um, I'll bring my brother on live so he, he can he can just be on and that we can know that he's there. Don't think I'm joking. All right, I'll bring him on now. He's, he's up there. He's not going to be talking yet. Y'all don't put pressure on him. He's not going to be talking yet. He's just going to show his handsome face on um, his wonderful um, studio that he's set up. <laughs> uh, but... um. Uh, welcome to Rod. Um, we, we really appreciate um, the fact that you're able to join us today um, all the way from the States. I've been really happy. I've been up since about three, four o'clock. We we're chatting. Um, it was late for him. It was early for me. And then we were chatting and laughing. It's a bit, but I, I believe in I believe in the prophetic. Now I said something. I said we were chatting. It was late for him. It was early for me. I believe that there is something that God wants to do in the lives of people. Now, there are certain people watching this broadcast who feel that time has passed them, it is late. Now, there are certain people who fall into the category of people that think that, no, it's too early to start. You see, but I believe that even as we go on with this broadcast, God will begin to drop things on your heart and in your mind. For those of you who think, oh, I'm too old to start. No, it's too late to start. Oh, maybe I'm too, I, I, can't, I can't be a part of this. I believe that um, God will uh, impress on your heart strongly um, ideas and strategies that you will enjoy. All right. Now, before before I play the promo and bring um, Jared up, I just want to say something. I was speaking with him earlier, and I said something to him. I said um, one of the, my motivation for um, having this business and finance seminar. For a lot of you that know me, I'm a prayer man. I pray. I love prayer. Everything I do is around prayer. I have my morning show, the morning do you? I have prayed with that boy. You know that. You know I'm a pastor. There's no hidden fact about that. But I, I also understand that everything we're doing is got to be funded. You know, the Bible said that money answereth all things. <laughs> and like the, the Honorable Bishop James would always say that as long as there are things, money will solve it. Now, you can pray about it. I always tell the people you can pray about it. But you better be sure that you have the capacity to handle what you're praying for. You have the capacity to handle wealth. If you don't have the capacity to handle wealth, you must have the intelligence to hire fund managers. If you don't have that intelligence, you must make sure you have account managers. So you don't necessarily have to be the person handling all your money. But you must be sensible enough to create access points or create people that will manage your wealth. Now, these are things that we will learn. I'm not an expert at this. But God started speaking to me during the beginning stages of the lockdown. I was speaking to Gerald earlier and I said, God spoke to me and said, after all this is said and done, one of the areas that people will feel pressure the most is on their finances, is on their money. Now, there is a stretch right now. You think there is a stretch? Wait till the coronavirus, the lockdown globally, wait till it's over. Because then you begin to see that when the bank begin to lift up of, of all these payment holidays and all this payment break and all these things, when they begin to lift it off, then you begin to see that the pressures pile up. I said to my wife earlier, I said, do you know that our electric bill, our li um, utility, all our utility bills and all that, they didn't say you would never pay for them. They may be suspended for a lot of people, but they did not say you, you won't pay for them. They are still your bills. They, they don't go away. They are still your bills bills you will still have to handle them so you must begin to think and i put up there i said one of the the, the things that we want to do talk about is creating opportunities in crisis one and then maximizing opportunities in crisis now there are people who don't have the ability to create opportunities but there are opportunities that are available to them but they don't they don't know they don't have the skills the tools the preparedness to maximize them now, there are people like Gerald who, when he begins to speak, you will realize he's, have, he's had the grace to create opportunities for people. And then he's also found himself over the years 
on how to maximize opportunities. Now, one of those opportunities I've been a part of. So you can you can begin to learn from people like this of skill. Now, what he's going to teach you may not be 100% what you want to jump into. It may not be a cup of tea, but the skills, the knowledge, the intelligence, the, the intel that you will receive can be transferable to a lot of things that you will do. You, you got to understand that President Trump, I like, I like using President Trump. I don't know why I don't, I don't use the um, British Prime Minister. I like Boris. But you must understand that President Trump, before they give a go-ahead to attack any nation that they are at war with, he doesn't necessarily have to be trained in military affairs. He doesn't have to be on the front line fighting against the Taliban, ISIS, or any of those groups. He doesn't have to be there to literally physically um, fight. But he works on intel that is given him by the people who are skilled, security experts, military experts. The people who are skilled in those areas give him the necessary intel and then in the war room, he is able to make a decision that can change the trajectory of an entire nation forever. How is that done? Not because he is skilled at military affairs, but because an intel was given to him and he is able to promptly, with the necessary advice and counsel, act on those intel. An intel of a given today, for those of you who will listen carefully, intels of a drop today, ideas of a drop, strategies of a drop. My wife put earlier, pick up your notepad and your pen. Get your iPad, you know, whatever thing you want to get to take documents and all of that, get them because something is about to happen. So without further ado, I'll play the promo and then my brother will come on and then we will begin to have him declare what God has put on his heart. Let me be sure that I have um, the correct promo. Do I have the correct promo? Yep, let me, yep, let me do that. Ladies and gentlemen, with a D.H. Davis Global Welcome, introducing my guest. He's a man who loves God, fears God, and serves God. With 16 years in the direct sales profession, featured in Success From Home magazine and inducted into the Network Marketing Pro Million Dollar Hall of Fame. He has built combined organizations of tens of thousands of distributors that have spanned across 23 countries including Thailand, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Canada, South Africa, Nigeria, and the United Kingdom. Via organization has generated tens of millions of dollars in revenues over the years. Him and his lovely wife, Portia Wilkins, have been amongst the top 50 income earners in two previous network marketing companies. He earned his first million dollars by the young age of 30. His most significant accomplishment is being the husband of his beautiful wife, Portia Wilkins, and the father to Chandler Wilkins. Please join me and welcome my friend and brother, Mr. Gerald Wilkins. Yes, 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 my brother. Welcome. Good to see you, Gerald. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I hope I can uh, be heard and uh, I'm coming through loud and clear, huh? I can hear you loud and clear, loud and clear. Just want to make sure my wife is my... Um, um, test engineer, she's my the one that determined everything is fine. Can you hear us loud and clear? If she says go, then everything is fine. I, I, I'm good. <laughs> Has she given us the green light to go? She's given us a green light. We're ready. We're ready. So I really um, welcome. I'm really um, um, appreciative of the fact that you um, um, accept to um, speak um, to us today. I'm really glad we do not take this. Um, this opportunity for granted. I know you could have been in several places when we're in several places, not necessarily physically, but your demand, you know, the demand for what you have 
um, is vast. We, so we are we are privileged. We are honored. Um, so I salute the grace of God upon your life. But beyond that, I know that in, in behind, you know, on, uh, I'm not physically seeing um, this um, um, right now, but um, this is your beautiful face. You know, your 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 home. What you have done. There is a there is a soul. There's a beautiful, wonderful, lovely woman who I know you know has managed to set this up. Now, for a lot of you that don't even realize, now most people think my wife is efficient and, and um, set up things the way um, I want things to do and all of that. But um, I, 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 I found that, that Gerald's wife is one of those kind of women who want to ensure that things are done perfectly well before he comes up. And before he was up, she was already up, you know, before to test the sound. Oh my God, I feel the anointed already. To test the sound, and to test the video to ensure the things are working effectively. Now, this is teamwork. I don't want to preach, but I can put a preach on this. Now, this is teamwork. This is people understanding their skills, their areas of strength, you know, and then maximizing it to the effectiveness of what God is destined for them to do. So we salute your wife, Portia. We salute you. We know that you're there watching, listening. We salute you. We love you. We really do. My wife and I really do love you. We cannot wait, you know, to... To see you guys physically to be with you you know someday either on this part of the world on the other side of the world or possibly in nigeria now for a lot of you that don't even realize that when i met gerald just a brief information when i met gerald i didn't even know that we grew in the same city from the beginning of our lives in port Harcourt. now for all the port Harcourt fools get excited you know um, in, port <laughs> in port Harcourt. you know it, so when i got to know the fact that um he grew in port Harcourt, it made me more excited you know so i am happy he understands my my children hear him the other day him talking about this sweet meal he had in in nigeria and they just couldn't stop laughing they got excited they just loved them they've not even seen the man but they just loved the man you know so we really thank you but i don't want to waste time to rot. i i just pass the mic to you and then just allow you to talk introduce yourself and then speak what's on your heart it's all yours well, thank you so much i am uh i'm expresso excited I am full of Jesus joy to be uh, on this uh, broadcast and in this co-space with you and your entire uh, community of people. I know we are live streaming this as well on our uh, Facebook pages all throughout our platforms because I think it's a discussion that is merited and warranted to be heard today. But uh, number one, congratulations on all that you are doing. I, I get invitations to uh, to speak and, and to impart uh, practical wisdom of what we've been able to apply in our lives all of the time. And uh, as you can imagine, with this COVID-19 uh, that is running rampant all over the world, uh, that demand is increasingly, uh, increasingly vast right now. As a matter of fact, uh, I've got about 30 minutes here and then I've got to get ready for another such uh, webinar. And then be, after that, I've got two more following that. And then we close out with one tonight at seven. And so uh, it's a jam packed schedule, but it's what I prayed for uh, when I was on my knees years ago uh, to be uh, to be counted, to be a blessing and to be used. A lot of times we want to be used by God, but we don't want to be used. And, um, you know, what I have discovered in my life and I don't know it all, but I can tell you through my experience, what I've discovered is you cannot be used by God until you're willing to be humiliated for God. And so, uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations to everybody that's on here. We're going to be talking uh, about business and finances today. And I, I don't want to come from the paradigm nor from the perspective that uh, business and finances are something that are a taboo or a taboo subject. I know all around the world, uh, it's one of the conversations that we're having at our dinner tables. It's one of the conversations that people are having in their bedrooms. It's a conversation that people are having uh, even outside where they're talking to God in tears, that man and that woman uh, looking for ways, wanting to create ways uh, to earn income. And so uh, tonight we're going to talk about that. We have already prayed. Apostle has led us in prayer. And uh, and so uh, I, I'm ready to dive into it. I was I was doing a study yesterday. Last couple of days, I've been up to about two, three a.m. in the morning. Uh, Dabo really, really uh, focused on the hunger and the thirst for for scripture and substance. Because when when it is, I, I'll be candid with you. I'm a reformed sinner, and I'm still <laughs> I'm still working on it every single day. Anytime I find myself in trouble, I'm not too proud to run back to God. Now I know some of you. You never leave God. You never, he never forsakes you and you've never slipped and you've never slumbered. I get it. 
But but for those of us who are honest, uh, for those of us who don't have it all together, I'm one of the first to tell you when I find myself in diverse temptation, I run back to God and say, Father, talk to me because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. So I sometimes got to go find where the wicked are. I need to talk to you, wicked person. I need to see what you're doing because the wealth that you have is laid up for me. I want to give a couple of things in terms of numbers, statistics, and some facts. You saw a little bit about our, our introduction, but I, I have to be completely candid. That's not where we started. You know, I started like so many people. I was working a corporate job. Uh, I was born here in the United States, raised in Nigeria, spent about six years there. My mother is from Nigeria. She's an Igbo woman. Uh, my dad is an attorney as well, but he's from uh, the States. He's from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. They actually met an undergrad here in the U.S. and ended up going to law school. So they're both attorneys uh, practicing law for the last 30 years. And so through the duration of this discussion tonight, uh, I'm going to vacillate between sounding like an attorney to build a case to find you uh, guilty of being anointed and guilty of being blessed. And then I'm also going to vacillate between being an attorney and sometimes sounding like a preacher. And I uh, make no apologies for that, no qualms for that. Uh, it's just what has been impressed upon me uh, throughout my life. But I started off like so many people working a job. I went to school, uh, wanted to get good grades, graduated and wanted to go into the corporate world, especially when I got back from uh, from Nigeria in 1994. And so I found out uh, in one of my uh, one of my challenging times, I was laying on the sofa of a friend's home and a couple of friends of mine came into the house and they were ranting and raving about this new job that would pay you to dress up nicely, be inside with air condition, have a have a computer in front of you where you talk to people on the phones and you make over nine dollars an hour. I was so excited. I was so fired up because they thought it was just some happenstance job. And I thought to myself, if they could get hired for that, I could get hired. Now, listen to me. I was on my I was not even on my sofa. I was on the sofa of a friend's home. Now, you may be asking, Jared, why in the world were you on the sofa of a friend's home? Because I got kicked out of my house. That's a whole different. That's my Old Testament. I want to talk <laughs> about my New Testament. But I was on his I was on his sofa. And I got up from where I was, I dug into the black suitcase or the black trash bags where I had all of my clothes put in at the time. I had double one black suit. I had one suit left and I took out that suit. Uh, I called the number that they had given me for this interview. I called that number and uh, I set up an interview that said, okay, we're, we're hiring. We want you to come in and, and go through the interview process. I dug into my trash bag pulled out the one suit I had. I ironed it. I had ironed this one black suit so many times that it was no longer black. It was a shiny sheen black. Some of you don't understand how to be broke, but but I had a shiny sheen black suit. I ironed and I had a little blue shirt. I had one tie. I had to learn how to tie a tie and, and I tied my tie. I, I had uh, my, my black shoes. I never forget this. I had my black shoes. I'm, I'm kind of giving you the experience because what you saw on the video is where what we've been able to accomplish. But I got to start you in the beginning because I want to give you tonight transferable truths that you will be able to apply in your pe personal pandemic situation right now. Now, some of you are saying, I'm good. I'm fine. I've got money coming in. I've got money put aside. We're healthy. We're wealthy. All is well. What about your family? What about your brother? What about your sister? What about your cousins? Are they fine? Are they okay? Do you have enough money to seed and to store? Do you have enough? Do you do you have enough resources where you can wake up and and you can answer the call of ten thousand pounds? You can answer the call of twenty thousand pounds. See, that's where I want to elevate your thinking level to. For those of you that feel you're fine right now, but I got I got uh, in the car, got my shoes out. I didn't have polish. I didn't have shoe polish, but I'd always been taught that a man's shoes are supposed to look well. So I took some Vaseline and I rubbed on my black shoes and just kind of dabbed it a little bit to make sure the shine was there. And I put on my shoes. I went to the interview. I knocked out the interview and they hired me on the spot. I started working for that company, making nine dollars an hour. Please write this down. The harvest never looks like the seed. Would you write it down, please? Your harvest or the harvest never looks like the seed. I, 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 I sat there 
went through the interview process. I sat there. I went through the duration of what we were supposed to experience and went through training. And I started at nine dollars an hour. But I didn't stay there. Went from nine dollars an hour, ladies and gentlemen. Studying how to do the job, how to be effective and to be efficient. I prayed that I would be hired. Matter of fact, I want you to write that down in your notes. You've got to pray. This is the shastratum of what we're going to discuss tonight. These three things. Pray, plan, work. Would you write it down, please? Pray, plan, work. One more time for the people in the back that have slid into uh, quarantine cathedral late tonight. Pray, <laughs> plan, and work. I did the interview. I get the job. I started off nine pounds an hour, nine dollars an hour. It's not something you can run home about. I'm not making millions of dollars at this time, but it's a start. And because of that, I started working and I got promoted. I, I got my first promotion in less than a year. I had a team of about 15, 16 people that reported to me. Then I got another promotion about a year and a half, two years later. My staff increased about 60 people, many of them twice my age. And I was doing well. I was on my way in my early 20s to making $100,000 a year. And uh, something happened. Change happened. I always tell people that the only constant in life is change. Change happened. One of the employees that I was managing, he ended up embezzling millions of dollars from the company by writing faulty contracts. Uh, I discovered this information through the clients that were calling saying, hey, I didn't order this. I didn't order that because we were working for a telecommunications company. And uh, I can't tell you the name of it, but I was working. We were working with this company. And uh, once I discovered it, I, um, I took it up to my manager, told him, hey, this has come back. We, we need to we need to handle this. And so he took it to his manager because this guy was one of the top executives in the company. He was number one for the last two or three years. So you had to approach, if you were going to accuse him of something, you had to have your documentation in the line. You have to have it backed by backed by backed information to make sure that it was indeed accurate. And so we did. Took it to the director of the program. The director escalated it over to the corporate headquarters in California. The vice president of company reviewed it and he gave up to eat it. We need to fire him. I said, of course, we need to fire him. I don't want to risk the, the jobs of the other 60 employees. I, I don't want them to have a personal pandemic. And, and so we did. A week goes by, ladies and gentlemen, and there was some chatter. There was some discussion about the fact that, um, you know, I, my job may have been in danger. And I said, there's no way. I'm, I'm the number one sales manager in the company uh, for the last two years. I, I started off. Uh, on the phones. I, they they have seen me rise through this. I've been a man of integrity. I haven't done anything wrong. I didn't write the bad contracts. I discovered it. He was he was doing this two years before I became his manager. I'm, I brought it to your attention. Why in the world would I be in trouble? Write this down, please. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Yeah. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. And, and, and what I've discovered is you cannot take things personally. In business and in life, you cannot take things personally. Because sometimes those things that are happening, they're not happening to you. They're happening for you. I, um, I get the information to get called. I get called into the office. I go into the office. I never forget it was on a Friday. Double, they call me to the office, not in the morning, but in the evening when the shift is almost over. Get a call. I'm at my office desk. I go into my, my, my boss's office at the time. He says, take a seat. I walk into the office and in his, on, in his desk uh, or at his desk is his manager and he's sitting on the, on the side of her. And they say, sit down. I said, no, I'm fine. I would rather stand. They said, sit down. Jen, I said, no, I'm fine. I'd rather stand. They said, sit down. I said, no, no, no. Go ahead and tell me what's going on. They said, well, unfortunately, um, we have to uh, terminate you. So ter terminate me. Why, why do you have to terminate me? I said, well, we have to terminate you um, and, and we have to part ways with you. You got to part ways with me. 
I said, if, if you don't mind, um, you, you can leave right now or you can you can wait to the end of the shift. Because they, we still had hundreds of people in the building. They said, you can wait to the end of the shift. We're not going to have to call security or any of that. Any of that. You can wait to the end of the shift and um, pack your things. As the tears began to jump and leap out of my eyes and I barely had enough gumption to catch them as they fell. I, uh, I said, thank you. I was heartbroken. I was perplexed. I was confused. I had taken a gut punch to the stomach, not seeing that, that this would happen to me, me of all people. And um, I walked over to my desk and uh, I said, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna wait. Mm -mm. I'm not gonna wait uh, for, for, for the shift to be over and for people to leave. Um, I want them to see you crucify me. I want them. I want people to see how you've treated me. I want everybody in here to see that nobody is safe. I began to take out the boxes and I started putting all my stuff, my pictures and, and all my personal belongings and items. I started putting them all in my box and I, I put, put my box together and people started popping up from their desk and they started looking around. They said, oh, what's going on? They, they let him go? And, and they started marching down to my desk and it was a whole movement of people coming around like, oh my God, they, they let Jared Wilkins go? Oh, we, we've been cutting up. We haven't shown up to work on time all the time. We, we haven't been the best at our roles. We've taken this uh, for granted many times, and we know how hard he's worked. We know the man of integrity he's been. We know how much of a blessing he's been, and they let him go. And uh, they started to help me put my things together, and you could hear the grumblings and the mumblings of people saying, oh, man, this is wrong. This ain't right. And, and they started helping me carry my boxes, and we went down to the car, and I put it in there. In that event, in 2006, changed and shaped my destiny. Would you put this in the comments, write this down. It is difficulty that produces destiny. Yeah, it's difficulty that produces destiny. In other words, there can be no strength without struggle. Yeah, there can be no strength without struggle. If you want to gain strength in your muscles, you want to get strength in your bodies, there must be some type of resistance. There must be some type of strain. That's how you develop strength. And so as we are now faced, as you're faced, maybe not as I was faced in 2006, maybe you've been blindsided. You've been laid off. You've been fired. You've been terminated. They, they, they're giving you walking paper saying, I know companies right now, they're saying, we have to lay off employees. We have to cl close down our businesses, close down our doors, because if we don't do it now, we will come back to not having a business. I want you to understand that I understand personal pandemic. I share that message with you today because it was it was my my, my process, ladies and gentlemen, and all of us have a different process, but it was my process to start me down the journey of entrepreneurship, of being a business owner, of understanding, and I want you to write this down, MSI, multiple streams of income. Let me share with you why. Let me give you some global job market statistics. We're talking about business and finance right now. I, I want to kind of give you a couple of things. I know we've got about 10, 10 to 12 minutes and I've got to jump off. Job market statistics, write them down, write them down quickly, put them in the comments. Number one, 87% of people globally don't like their job, 87%. 50% of people are not satisfied or fulfilled with their job, 50%. 25% of people polled say their job is the number one stress in their life, their job, not their wife, not their husband, not their kids, but their job. 70% of people in the world today, that's a correct number, 70% live paycheck to paycheck, 70%. 70% of people that were polled are not motivated by their career, 70%. 50% of people are underpaid for their job. They're underpaid. 67% admit they're in the wrong career path. 
67%. Admit they're in the wrong career field. And 72% are being undermined so they will not succeed. 72%. I told you I would vacillate between sounding like a preacher and an attorney. If you would allow me, this is uh, Exhibit A. I'm building a case. Exhibit A, global job market statistics. Now, as we are all being touched and experienced in some way or another, some of us know people that have, uh, have passed from COVID-19. Some people know individuals right now that are have been diagnosed. And I believe the doctor is right to diagnose or give you diagnosis, but they should not be able to give you prognosis. But there are people that have diagnosed or been diagnosed with COVID-19. There are those of us that have been sequestered and told to stay at home. There are others of you that have discovered one word in the English language that has arrested your attention for the last 30 to 45 days and I want you to write this down. The word is essential. 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 See, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I've discovered about business. Business, successful business, to be in business is very simple. You have to supply demand. Money is the reward for solving problems. Write that down, please. Money is the reward for solving problems. One more time. Money is the reward for solving problems problems. One last time, money is the reward for solving problems. So when, when it is that you're looking right now, you say, okay, I don't have money. I don't have enough. I don't have enough money. What I'm going to suggest to you for the next 10 minutes is how to solve more problems. Question. Exhibit B. What are people looking for right now? What are people, what problem are people looking to solve right now? What challenge are the people in your community, people in your audience, whether that's your online community or your offline community, what are the challenges they are facing right now? What are the problems they're facing right now? Because if you can become a solutionist to those problems, guess what happens? Money shows up. Money doesn't show up as a result of a miracle. As a matter of fact, most people miss the miracle because you move. You're missing it. Most people miss the miracle because you move. Jared, make it plain. You've heard of the story when Jesus fed the 5,000. Remember that story in the Bible? He fed the 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves of bread. But here's what the text deducts in terms of reasoning. The people that were fed were the ones that stayed put. <laughs> I'm moving faster than you're catching up. The people that experienced the miracle of being fed were the ones that stayed put. The reason why so many people do not experience miracles as it relates to being fed is because you keep moving to and fro. Sometimes in business and in life, you have to pause for station identification. You need to pause to discover what are the problems that people had. Jesus knew the problem people had. They were hungry. It was a problem. How do I know it was a problem? Because they started talking and, and oh, you got to imagine he was going on for a long, he was going on for a long period of time teaching and teaching. And, and, and it always baffles me. It was 5,000 people that were accounted for, but they really says about 15,000. Most theologians say, theologians say it was about 15,000 when you include women and children, but 5,000 people. But here's the thing, here's the thing. He, the word got back to him that there was a problem and he paused. I told you, you got to pray. What did he do? He prayed. Then he planned. Okay, what's the plan? What's your plan? You don't have enough money. What's the plan? Is the plan I, I'm just going to wait on the government? That could be a plan. I'm, listen, I'm not here to dem demonize whatever the plan is. What I'm saying is you pray first. And then you plan. What's our plan? Are we waiting on the government? What's our plan? Are we waiting for the job to hire us? What's the plan? Are we going to wait to see if our job is going to keep us employed? What's our plan? Are we going to wait before we start to evolve our business? Uh, what's our plan? Are we going to wait and start pointing the finger, castigating blame? No, we've got to put in a plan. So here's what Jesus does. He says um, to the people that brought the problem, go find something. Hmm? 
the plan or, 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 or what it is that you're looking for to solve. You've got it in your inventory. It's, you just got to see, that's why you got to pause to search and to start seeing, because it's in your, it's, it's connected to you. To make money is simple. It's simple. It's a simple thing. My wife sent me a text this morning. They had just dropped five figures in our account this morning. You understand? Are you listening? That is, and that's one of the, the streams. That's not all this. That's just one of them. Now I'm not here to brag. Listen to me. Remember, I'm the same one that was sitting, laying on the sofa in my friend's house. I'm that same one that had to go in the trash bag to pull out my one black shiny suit. I'm that same one. Come on. That had to put Vaseline on my shoes to make sure they were polished. I'm that same one. But what changed? A plan. Matter of fact, I submit to you, there's not a there, there, there's nothing that you having a prayer life and plan with work that can accomplish. So now, so here's what happens. Here's what happens. So they bring the two fish and the five barley loaves of bread. And he tells the disciples, okay, and this is where most people skate past the scripture and they start shouting. Let me give you scripture. He organ devil, he organizes them. He tells them, hey, put them in groups, organize these people. That's a plan. Plan watch this, write this down. Plan produces structure. Now you're saying, Jared, you're supposed to be telling me about business. You're supposed to be telling me about products. You're supposed to be telling me about services. You're supposed to tell I can tell you about all that, but if you don't have a plan, you won't go produce it. I can give you the project all day long to build, but if you don't have a plan, you won't build it. So he put, they organize these people and watch what Jesus does. He takes what's not enough. Two fish, five barley loaves of bread. He takes 250 pounds. Come on. He takes $250. He takes what's not enough. My, my rent is $2,500, but I only have $250. My, my mortgage is 2,500 pounds, but I only have 250 pounds left. He takes what's not enough and he blesses it. He prays. <laughs> Can you bless what's not enough? Can, can you can you bless? Can you give thanks to God? Man, I'm I'm breathing without a ventilation machine. <sighs> can you thank God for what is not enough? I woke up. The old folks would say, I woke up with my mind stayed on him. It's a blessing just to have your mind, your mental faculties right now, to be able to, to wake up on your own accord and, yeah, you know, to have lights and, and to be able to have a phone or some device where you can see and you can hear this information. The importance of information is that it goes in and it forms a certain action. Oh. Are you listening to me? Information, inform. That's information. It goes in me. It forms a certain belief pattern and I can take action on it. That's the importance oh, yeah. of information. That's why I don't get castigated and enthralled by individuals. I'm looking for information. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. Not an individual, but information. All right, I'm almost done. So now they organize. After he blesses it, he breaks it. And when we break it, we lose account for how much is, how much is available. Prior to the breaking, we knew he had two fish and five barley loaves of bread. After the blessing and the breaking, we lose count of how much he has. It is after the breaking that things begin to multiply. It is after the corona has entered into society, we lose account for the multiplication of the money that you're going to receive. Now, I have no quorums at all with asking people for money. Why, Jared? Because money is a reward for solving a problem. So question, question, and I'm almost done. What problem are people searching for? Right now, people are looking for ways, number one, to build, support, and to protect their immune systems. That's one of the number one conversations people are having right now. How in the world do I take care better, better care of my body? If you can find a solution to that, people will give you money. 
It is, an, it is an essential conversation people are having. Man, I need vitamin A. I need vitamin D. I need to protect my body. Man, I'm being quarantined. I'm gaining weight. How do I lose weight? I'm telling you, these are conversations or these are problems. See, see what I'm watch this. Write this down. This just hit me. What a man or woman wants shows up in their conversation. Hmm? What a man or woman wants shows up in their conversation. One more time. What a man or woman wants shows up in their conversation, but what they expect shows up in their behavior. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. But what they expect shows up huh, in their behavior. All right. So, so, so I'm giving you things, things to do now. We've talked about praying. You should do it. I've talked about planning. What's your plan? I'm not going to give you a plan. I'm just, I'm telling you, you need to have a plan. Jared, where do I start? You need to connect with somebody that has proven they have a plan. The plan may not be the plan for you, but it gives you the guidelines or the check marks by which you can utilize to come up with your plan. Are you listening for me or listening to me? If you don't have a plan, other people will give you their plan. <laughs> if you don't have a plan, other people will give you their plan. And guess what most people have planned for you? Not much. All right. So, so, so you got to have a plan. Okay. What's my plan? What's my plan? What's my plan? How do I plan to do this? How, how do I plan? If this, if this continues to go the way it's going for the next 30 days, the next 60 days, 90 days, we don't know how long, but whatever it is, what's my plan? Now, after I've come up with my plan, I've got to have work. I've got to, I've got to back up my plan with some work. I've got to be working, executing on the plan, not just praying. The, 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 the book of life says work pl plan while the day is young. But you must see faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. It takes faith to start and it takes faith to finish. In between the faith is work. Faith without work <laughs> is dead. Faith without what? Work is dead. But I venture to say working without faith is dead too. So I don't just want to work. <laughs> I want to have faith. And I just don't want to have faith. I want to work. It's, it's a, it is a compound effect of the both of them. So I pray for direction. God, give me direction. Send me the right people. Send me, send me the right coach. Give me the right idea. Give me the right information. I pray because when I pray, prayer is the petitioning of the holy government. Prayer is the petitioning of the kingdom government on earthly affairs. I can't depend on this government. I'm de hey, yeah, here you go. I'm depending on the kingdom government. God, give me the plan. Hear me. He'll start rearranging things, connecting you with people. The right phone call will come in. The right inbox will come in. The right DM will come in. The right text message will come in. And because I prayed, I have prostrated myself to be in a position to hear when my prayers are being answered. Now I prayed, I get the plan. What's my plan? Because the, I'm not going to sit here and die. No, 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 no. Job's wife said, cuss God and die. Nope. I'm, that is not the plan. Matter of fact, anybody that's saying just curse God and die is from the pit of hell. That's not the plan. Money didn't disappear. Money has not disappeared. Well, Jared, they're going to take us off the fiat. They're going to put us on the gold stand. That wonderful. Whatever it is that people are using to exchange for groceries, for all that, all that, whatever that is. I don't care if it's pounds, dollars, naira, euros, gold, silver, whatever it is. I need more money in my house. And so I've got to answer and solve more problems. What's my work? I've got my plan. If I, if you're in one of these three dimensions. Working on your plan or executing the plan, meaning I'm working. What's my work? What am I working on? I'm working on me. I'm working on my mind. I'm working on the business and I'm working in the business. So, you know, you may be asking, well, Jared, what business should I be involved with? You can be involved in a good business and it not be the right business. That's right. How do I determine what's the right business? I determine what is the right business because it fulfills purpose. I'm out of time, y'all. I've got to jump on another webinar. Dabo, thank you for having me on. We ought to pick up a part two soon 
on this today. I just wanted to lay the foundation for for the 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 objective of business and financing uh, because we are called to be kingdom financiers. There's somebody that's supposed to be financing the kingdom, and I volunteer. I volunteer to be a kingdom financier because he gives seed to the sower. Thank you for having me on, brother. We will definitely set up a date. Once we're offline, I'm going to drop a message to you and Portia. We'll set up a date because these, I think, my head is blowing. This is a foundation. And it's good because a lot of us have to go and begin to look into this video, into all of this recording and prepare ourselves for what is to come. Look, y'all, he hasn't even touched nothing. I'll be very honest with you. He hasn't touched nothing, but Dirk, we appreciate you. I know you're going to jump on the call, so I'll let you go. I'll release you, you know, let it go so that you can jump on the call. I will catch up with you um, once you're through later in the day. So thank you all. Y'all pray for him. Even as he goes, pray for him. Bless him. Thank you to you and Portia. We love you. We appreciate you. And I'll, I'll get back to you um, once we're offline. You can, you can run off, bro. You can run off. God bless you, bro. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, I don't know how many of you were taking notes, but I am... Um, I am already, um, look, I, I got a lot in my head to deal with. I'll tell you the truth. It is, um, it is going to be, it is going to be a different kind of year after this broadcast. Now, most people think the year has just ended because of all the current virus pandemic, but I'll tell you the truth. We're, we're just about to get started. We're about to get started in the midst of all this, God is giving us strategy in the midst of all this, God is planting things in our hearts. You know, in Exodus chapter 1, verse 12, it came to mind. It said, but the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to the dread of the Israelites. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. I would not go further to take any more time. I really appreciate everyone for joining. If you haven't shared the broadcast, I encourage you to share. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be live on, um, on the morning dew. And I want you all to, um, to join me. I want you all to join me on the morning deal. As many of you, if everyone who is on this broadcast can join me on the morning deal tomorrow, I think we should be live about 6 o'clock in the morning. We will be praying about most of the information Jared has given. Remember, he said, when you pray. Now, this is very profound, y'all. He said, when you pray, God will begin to implant in your heart ideas and strategies. Remember, he said, you can be part of a good business, but it may not be the right business. That is the reason why... Most people join a business that other people have succeeded in, have made a lot of money. And then when you join, you find that you're struggling. You're not making any profit. You're not getting anything out of it. And then you go back to them and say, Sister Dawn, what's happening? You made money out of this business. How come I'm not making nothing? Elizabeth, you made profound amount of money on this business. How come I'm not, I'm not, making, um, I'm not making anything out of it? Now, it may be a good business. Perhaps it does not suit your DNA. It does not suit your personality. It does not work for you. It, it, you're not going to be resourceful in that area. One thing that came to mind whilst I was, Gerald was speaking quickly and then we were close. One thing that came to mind was when um, the, the widow met Elijah and um, in, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2, this question that he posed to this woman has been ringing in my head all week. And I want to pose the same question to you. The Bible in the book of 2 Kings chapter 4 says, Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophet cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Now, it emphasized the fact that the man is a godly man because it feared the Lord. Now, a lot of us on this broadcast fear the Lord, but we're broke. Come on, y'all. We, we are prayerful, but we're broke. We are filled with the Holy Ghost, but we are broke. We can't make ends meet. We can we leave from hand to mouth. He said, we feared the Lord, and now his creditor is coming to take my two sons as he sleeps. Elijah looked at the woman and said, the Bible said, Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? That word in, that word in your house is so profound. When, when Gerald started talking about in formation, two words, in formation, in formation, it is amazing because the most important thing, everything, if you look at everything we're dealing with financially and otherwise, what we're dealing with is already on the inside. The solution is already on the inside of us that we have not maximized it. Like I said to my wife, I said, if you have a skill, that people used to create wealth, are very resourceful with, to create wealth, and it has brought them out of poverty. I said, if you have such skill, you don't have the right to cry about financial lack and all the challenges, because God has already blessed you with it. 
you have a skill that for instance you can bake cake everybody that eats your cake is excited about it it's the best cake they've ever had it is the most wonderful homemade cake they've ever had you you do it with ease you do it with joy you don't struggle to do it but yet you still go about crying about resources perhaps you're ignoring the idea that god has given you and you're looking at oil and gas now to, to just to just make you understand something he read about the breaking of bread and the five loaves and two fish the emphasis was not on the major on how big the provision was but on how he blessed it broke it and then they started giving it out now we all look at the result that come on what people do oil and gas is very um, is very um, lucrative people make money from it and this and that perhaps that is not what god is destined for you maybe what god is destined for you is just to open a hair saloon Maybe that is what God has given to you. Open the air saloon. And that will liberate your life, put your children through private school, buy you free houses, set you up on a platform that no one has ever imagined. People will never believe that opening a hair saloon could literally transform your life. My question is, what do you have in your house? Now, not, not only your physical house, but uh, the Bible makes us understand that our bodies are the temple of the living God. So it's a house. So in this house, what do you have in this house? So she said, nothing. The woman said, nothing. Because so often we don't identify or place emphasis on what we have. We always look at them as minuscule, as, as, as insignificant, as, as nothing. She said, she said, your servant has nothing there at all. She said, except. That little except is perhaps what God would use to transform our lives like he did the life of this widow in 2 Kings chapter 4. Except a small jar of olive oil. My question is, why did she have to emphasize on the quantity? Why did she have to quantify the provision? Why did she have to quantify the resources that she has? But that is you watching me right now. You, you have something within you. But you have quantified it. Oh, I don't. I, I can't do nothing. But I can braid hair. Come on, y'all. You said I can't. I can't really do nothing. I'm not good at data. I'm not good at IT. I'm not good at this. But but you know what? I can sing. Oh, I can write. The thing that we often um, see as insignificance most times are the thing that God has given to us to transform our lives. But we are most times afraid because you can make coffee. But immediately you think of making that wonderful coffee that you make, that everybody enjoy with your homemade cake. Immediately you think of it as a business. What comes to your mind, your competitors come to your mind. Starbucks and Cafe Nero and, 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 and all this um, um, Costa come to mind. And you, you, you go back into your shelf because in comparison to what they do or what they are doing, you amount to nothing. But what makes you think that? What makes you think that because... You are not where they are. That is why the theme of this of this broadcast is start up. It is not just for a startup business, but to start up, which means to be where you are, but have an eye for where you were going. My God, he talked about planning. So there is nothing wrong in knowing your competition, but don't be don't don't go into your shelves. Don't be afraid. Don't run away because of the competition you have. So start up. Who are your competitors? Where are you going? Where are you planning to go? What are you trying to achieve? Begin to make research. Begin to ask questions. Begin to link up with the necessary people. He made a statement, and I saw um, Pastor um, Reverend Maria Luz put it up there. She said, God, give me the grace. Bless me with the right people. Begin to network. Begin to connect with like-minded people. One of our problems is that we have constantly, effectively been around ineffective people. I will say it again. One of our problems for most of us is that we have constantly, effectively been around ineffective people, people who are not relevant to what God is destined for us in ministry. If you look at it from a spiritual perspective, it is applicable. If you look at it from a business perspective, it is also applicable. In ministry, most of us have been around people who constantly undermine what God has given to us. She said, don't put it up there. She says, stock up on your on self-development. This is the best time to develop yourself. Don't go and hang around people who are not relevant to what God is destined for you to do because what they do look exciting. Listen, what someone else does might look exciting, but in relation to what God is destined for you to do, it may be nothing. 
I'm telling you the truth. Put it this way. Now you might look at um, shell oil. Shell oil might be lucrative, doing business well, making profit very well. Their turnover is good. Their share price is going up. But that may not be what God is destined for you. That may not be what God is destined for you, even if the opportunity looks like it presents itself. God might not be link linking you to that opportunity, even though it looks good. He might be relating you to a little home-based startup business to work with foundationally and then grow to become something very significant. I got to go now. But if you can, I'll play a little promo. If you can join me tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, on the morning dew, let us pray on most of these things and place a demand on God for God to bless our mind, to increase us from the inside. Money run to people to solve problems. I always tell the people, don't run away from problems. When you run away from problems, you are running away from opportunities. The more problem you solve, your value is determined by how much problems you solve. That is the truth. That is the reason why the boss and more than you. Your value is determined by how much problem you solve. It is not about how you dress. It's not about who your parents are. It is about the value you give what you are worth, what value, what do you bring on the table, what kind of problem you solve, that is commensurate to your remuneration, to what you are paid. So both of you go to work seven and a half hours, someone earn more than you, it is, you live in the same house, perhaps on the same street. The question is, what kind of problem are you solving? What kind of problem are you solving or what kind of problem are you running away from? Maybe that is the reason why you're still where you are. Because opportunities come disguised like problems, and then you are not able to open them up, and then you run away. I'm going to let you all go. Watch this clip. Get ready for tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, on the morning dew, and then we can um, have um, a blast in prayer and pressing to God, and God helping us align. Oh.